So I can drop a P2P in there, or if I just have like a ISO proof strip here, you know, this is a standard, the, the little ISO 54 patch strip. Um, basically, you can drop just about anything in here. It makes life easier. And the same thing happens down in the G7 verify stage. So let's jump into the runs because this might look more familiar to those who have seen Curve before. Uh, one run is automatically made for you when you open up a new document. And it's just, you know, run one calibration here. Um, but it should look and feel reasonably familiar, maybe not identical, but, but same sort of ideas of what we've seen before. Now what I'm going to do is bring in a P2P and uh, load it up, and I'm going to bring in a second one. And there's a feature that appears here that I wanted to illustrate. Um, so you bring it in. Now, let's talk about the bringing in of measurements first. Uh, this list is, it works pretty much in the same way as what you've seen before in the earlier version of Curve, where every item that you bring in here that has a check mark beside it is averaged together into one single average, and that average is used for the rest of the calculations. What it does now, though, is if you click on any one of those particular measurements, down at the bottom of the list it says average delta E 3.99, max delta E 12. That is the, the delta E between the one you've selected and the average that has been calculated. Now the benefit of this method of doing things, and I'm going to throw a few more measurement files in here, is that uh, it will color code things uh, depending on how far away they are. So in this particular case, what I've done is I've, I've brought in three identical ones. That's not the sort of thing you'd normally do. I brought in three identical files and another file uh, from a different, completely different place. In your case, you'd bring in four, five, six. Hopefully, you've been measuring multiple sheets from a press run. You bring it, them into the measurements area here. And any of the outliers will be marked in either yellow or red, depending on how far away from the average they are. So it's a quick indicator that some of your measurements may not be very good and should either be double-checked or removed entirely, depending on whether it's a bad measurement or, you know, if you have a lot of variability, you have a lot of variability. But this is a quick check so that you can know if one of your sets of measurements um, is, is, is a problem. It's got some serious problems in it. So let's step on to the next stage. Now the graphs, the graphing capability of, of Curve 2 has been expanded significantly. We basically rewrote the entire graphing uh, system underneath Curve. So the first thing you can see is that when I enlarge the screen, the document size here, they all enlarge, but you can go to any single one and some controls appear here and you can enlarge that one. Let's go to this particular one. You can enlarge that to take over most of the window if you want to see it in greater detail. You can also uh, select the magnifying glass and zoom in on any particular portion of it uh, in pretty great detail. I can grab the hand and move around if I want. And I can explore the curves and in, you know, practically any graph that's in curve here you can do this with. You can go into great detail and go all the way down to what's happening in the highlights and that sort of thing. Uh, then you can just shrink it back down, put it in place, and go on from there. Uh, so, so you can get a lot more information out of these graphs. And in fact, when we get to the Create Curves area, you'll see that it helps you um, build better control point sets for your RIP. Um, now, these are very similar graphs to what we had before. Uh, density versus uh, the percentage of cyan, basically. Um, and, but in the next pane, under Analyze, we get into greater detail. In Curve 1, it was, I believe, called Analyze Color, and there were a few more graphs in there and a little bit of data. Now we've actually created multiple tests. So the ink and paper test makes another appearance here. And you can see that uh, how, you know, how the averaged set of data that you've got here compares to the color aim that you were shooting for. Um, gives you the delta E and all that sort of stuff. Not really any different than the one, the one you saw before, but of course this is for a particular run and it's from the average data. But there's another tab here called G7. And the G7 tab uh, actually introduces some metrics to calculate the effectiveness of the G7 calibration that you've done. Um, so this is kind of new. Um, there are a number of different things that people have been doing to try and give numbers around um, the validity of a G7 calibration, 
But what we tried to do here, you might see, is at the, at the top graph, is we've broken them into two different groups, I guess you could say. The first one is the curve shape. So you know, when you look at the curves in this particular case here, um, the shape, the, uh, how well the CMY and the K curves match the idealized G7 curve shape is what we're doing in this G7 test. And what we're doing it with is delta L. So we calculate how far off uh, the points in the graph are, or the points in the curve are, from the idealized one. And so if it's perfect, then, then it should be just zero all the way across, basically. In this particular case, you can see that you know, the greatest variation in this, what we're graphing here is both the, the K and the CMY curves, uh, you know, neutral density curves. You can see that, you know, they're maybe at their worst around 50%, and then they get quite good around 90, and then they go off again ab about 100. The, the fact that they go off a bit around, about, around 100 is not surprising because we do not control what happens at 100. And no matter what curve does, it ultimately has to give over to the press operating with a 300% patch there, and we don't change that. So in, in gray balance, you'll see much the same thing. Um, so the second graph here is for gray balance. And this is the, basically us dividing things, again, from curve shape to gray balance. Gray balance is the second part of what G7 does. First thing it does is get the tone curve looking as, as smooth and, uh, and even and as good as it can. And the next thing it does, if you choose the option, is to have gray balance be calculated. Now what we've done here in this gray balance curve is have the AB graph that you might be familiar with of the A and B values, uh, but we've introduced a new metric to many which is called delta F. Uh, delta F is actually simpler than you might think. Uh, what it is is if you're familiar with how delta E is calculated with the, um, the you know, basically delta L squared, delta A squared, delta B squared, and then the square root of the whole thing. It's a fairly simple calculation. If you leave the delta L component out and you just calculate the color, the difference between A and uh, delta A and delta B, basically the points in AB, um, that's what delta F is. It's the measurement of how far off the color is irrespective of the lightness. And so by doing this, we really have divided the metric between the two. And you can tell that you may have great tone curve shape, but bad gray balance, or vice versa. Um, and the metrics are summarized on the left in the table here. So the CMY is average delta L max, as well as the gray balance. Uh, you can get a feeling for how things are going. Does anybody have any questions about that? We've had some, some questions about delta F. Okay. One, one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, Don spent a long time on the manual for Curve 2, and it is excellent. It's what, like, honestly one of the best manuals I've written, I've read, <laughs> written. Um, it's, it's very good. It's thorough, it's clear, uh, and it does have an explanation of Delta F in, uh, in one of the appendices in the back. So there's definitely more information that you can get about that. As well as we invite you to enter into the conversation about it if you have different ideas of what metrics could and should be used for G7. Uh, by all means, you know, we're happy to, to discuss that. Uh, we're sort of in the, I guess you could say, in the early stages of, of determining the metrics for G7. And we want to make sure we do a good job and that we get agreement, I would say. So the next, the next uh, test that's available here is TVI. Uh, and this is basically the, the dot gain or the TVI graph uh, of the data set. If we were in TVI mode, it would also have results in this column here, basically telling us how well we were doing versus the TVI curve shape that we were shooting for. So let's jump up from Analyze Color over to Create Curves. Now Create Curves is similar to how it was before, but again, it's been enhanced. Um, the graphs are significantly more accurate. Uh, the graph now uh, it only contains the data points that are basically the control points that are over here on the right. And so if you have very few control points, for instance, if I bump this to like 50%, you have very simple graphs. Uh, and this may not be what Curve is actually wanting us to do, but we've just decided we're going to have you know a, a point of 50% and that's it in this case. But if I go back to 10%, you can see a sort of more logical spacing. But now that we now what we can do with Curve is uh, you can break this into each particular channel, 
And when you do that, a different line appears in addition. Uh, and you might be able to see it. You 